When thinking about Kirby bosses, many foes come to mind. After all, Kirby has had so many opponents throughout the years, some having the privilege of coming back even after their defeat. But only some of Kirby's enemies have stood the test of time, and even fewer have transcended their simple boss status and become something iconic. Nightmare, Marx, Mangalore, the fucking tree, Zero Two. Out of all of these though, there is one who stands atop of them all as Kirby's greatest hater. Coming back game after game, no matter the world, no matter the circumstances, to challenge Kirby to a brawl. Just one look at the bright sky will make you realize that they can and will appear to prove their sheer hatred for the puff. Now let me say I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. Hello everyone, it's me, Savvy, and I think that more people need to acknowledge how important and cool Krakow is. I've always been a fan of characters who can control or are somehow associated with the weather, and I feel as if Krakow doesn't get the love that he deserves, despite him being one of the most prominent characters in the series. So today, I'll make my mission to deliver a hopefully worthy coverage of the ruler of the sky. Let's get started. <laughs> According to the manual of Kirby's Dream Land, all of the game's bosses, including Krakow, are part of a band of thieves guided by his majesty King Dedede, who stole not only the inhabitants of Dream Land's food, but their sparkling stars as well, which were a vital resource for them. You come across Krakow pretty late into the game in the second to last stage, and before facing off the main man himself, or rather the main cloud himself, you face off against Krakow Jr. Now, despite its name, Krakow Jr. is not the offspring of the original Krakow. In fact, Krakow did not fuck. Krakow Jr. has a very interesting design and attack pattern, as it is in every way an inferior version of Krakow. It is kind of funny to think that he probably thought that he could beat Kirby with such a simpler version of himself, only for him to get absolutely humbled, even though that was most likely a design choice. Krakow Jr.'s attacks compared to his senior counterpart are mostly similar. You have the tackle, the enemy drop, the works. One that sticks out is the rain of bullets he throws at you, which he strangely cannot do in his improved form. His real fight though is where stuff gets really interesting. This is where he gets all of the iconic and cool attacks we know him from. The dash, the drop, the beams, it's all here and what a great first impression it is, as most of Krakow's move from this game would remain throughout all of his appearances. Now just one year later, Krakow would make his grand return in Kirby's Adventure, with what I consider to be one of the best fights from that game. Adventure is a game that often relies on level design and set pieces to show the world to its players. Whether that be with each level in Butter Building progressing higher in the tower, or the Zeppelins in Orange Ocean get to fly with, that same design philosophy is wonderfully shown with Krakow's fight. For once, you need to reach the battlefield yourself, jumping from cloud to cloud thanks to high jump, while Krakow Jr. furiously chases you. It's a very tense fight, and one that personally feels very special to me. Whereas most fights in the game feel like they could have been done in the original Kirby's Dream Land, this battle against Krakow is funnily the only one, alongside Meta Knights, that truly feels like it would be only possible in Adventure. That being because of the introduction of copy abilities. In a way, it feels as if Krakow is evolving with the player, with us, and with Kirby. Now, here's the thing, we've seen Krakow shit out Waddle Doos, Starman, even Bats and Pimmelland, which is all pretty strange in and of itself since we don't really know for certain how those guys are even summoned. The best we can do is assume and think that Krakow simply traps whatever it touches inside of himself, and that none of those creatures are actually of his creation. This is backed up by the fact that in Triple Lux we see all sorts of junk coming from inside of his cluster of clouds. Now, even with all that out of the way, I'm still left wondering if Krakow can really create life in any way, and thankfully, more so warningly, Hal had my same exact question. So when Kirby journeyed across the Rainbow Islands in Kirby's Dream Land 2, they introduced these little guys. They're called co Krakos, or Lil Krako. God damn, with a name like that, he has his whole SoundCloud career laid out in front of him. The funny thing about these guys is that according to Kirby's Epic Yarn, of all games, they're Krakos in training, which just raises a lot more questions than answers, but we'll get back to that in a bit. What I personally enjoy about Dreamland 2's fight is that, in a similar manner to what we saw in Kirby's Adventure, Krakow is in his home turf, so he has advantage over you, and I think that here it is shown in a very clever way. He will disappear among the clouds that surround Kirby to then come back right behind them when they least expect it. 
This version of the fight isn't really anything revolutionary or groundbreaking, but it added enough where the fights still feel fresh while conceptually just being Krakow. Again. Now, Krakow had what most consider a pretty inconsequential role in Kirby Superstar as a boss during Spring Breeze. It's basically just an improved version of both the Adventure and Dreamland fights, but what is great here is that with Superstar's new system, the Helper system, you can team up with the Waddle Doos that Krakow drops to go against him, which is admittedly a little bit fucked up, but it's great in the sense that Beam can go against a Beam Master. And for a while, that was that. Krakow was just a guy, master of thunderbolts and lightning, very very frightening me, and regular Kirby foe. Nothing special, nothing that made him Kirby's biggest hater for that matter. So when did that change? When did he transition from a villain to a hater? Reading some of Krakow's lines and descriptions from his past appearances reveal a bit about him and his relationship with Kirby. What really catches my attention is the fact that no matter the collectible he gains or what he has to guard, Krakow never backs down from a fight. It is in Kirby Fetters Deluxe, of all games, that we learn something more about him which changes a lot about the way I personally perceive these encounters with him. You! Did you think I'd forget the time you smashed me with your high jump? The time I was betrayed by helpers, or when I was replaced by that mechanical cloud. <laughs> I think there's something in my eye. Unlike most other bosses in the series, Krakow is confirmed by this simple line to be the same exact entity and character in each game, which explains and improves a lot of his encounters. Couple that with the fact that many of the modern Krakow boss screens say that he can appear whenever there's clouds in the sky. Taking that into consideration, that means that during the events of Amazing Mirror, where mostly everyone from the normal world had been replaced with a Mirror World counterpart, Krakow is just himself. He doesn't even have a motive here aside from maintaining his beef with Kirby. Same with Triple Deluxe, though he was alerted by Theranza, Krakow had already explored Floralia and made it part of its territory. According to his boss description, he was also powered up by a mysterious power source, most likely the Sunstones, which powered him up a lot, giving him strong new attacks. Again, all the other bosses in the game are just creatures or things which were already present in the magical world which were altered by Theranza to stop Kirby in the meantime, except for Krakow, who's just fucking Krakow. Even in Star Allies, Krakow just shows up in the main game, not even altered by the effects of the Jamba Heart. He just wants to fight. To be honest, it is kinda unclear whether or not he was affected by the artifact. Most bosses who are altered by it usually have this purple mist around them, which is strangely missing during Krakow's encounter. That doesn't mean he didn't come into contact with it though, as in here is another dimension you come across Peril Twin Krakow and Peril Big Krakow, which could only exist if Krakow was influenced by the Jamba Heart, if I understand this correctly. Something interesting that you can discover through the pause description of this fight is that the cloud itself was created from the tears of past form Krakos and their rebellious hearts. You can also see once again that Krakow is the same entity throughout all the games in the pause description for the big Krakow fight, where it's stated that he takes pride in the fact that he's been a gatekeeper boss since the very start of the series. It's very funny to think that if the Jamba Heart amplifies one's rage and pure emotions, Krakow simply didn't need it because he was already so fucking mad and take on Kirby, taking into consideration all the hatred he had felt for them in the past. And that's as far as I'm going to dabble into Kirby lore. Though he is respected and acknowledged by various parties, such as the artists of Freeman and Hallmark Works Company, his everlasting grudge against Kirby feels so one-sided. All of the effort and strength Krakow puts into each of his fights feels comically uneven, but his way of improving and trying so desperately to one-up his foe is what makes him such a good character and villain to me. Sure, while Kirby and their fanbase might not see the greatness of the God of the Skies, Krakow in a way managed to impress one very young savvy that took and now takes each and every fight seriously. Though Krakow might come out comically defeated out of every fight, that will never stop him from trying to achieve something new and be respected by his opponent. Maybe that's a lesson we could all take from him. Though his ways might be a tad bit aggressive, his perseverance and way to pursue his goals is weirdly inspirational. No Kirby boss before and after him has ever done something of this scope most other recurring bosses coming back through recreations or different versions of themselves. Simply put, Krakow is the face of a journey that we, the players, take from one game to another, and honestly, I can't wait to see what he has in store now that we are in a new era of the franchise. All I know is that no matter the dimension, the time, the world, or the circumstances, Krakow, God of the Skies, will be there no matter what. And with that being said, Savvy, out.
Yo, post-production savvy here. I just finished working on the video. And what a long time it has been since the last savvy video like this, you know, scripted and such. Um, I'm sorry, because these take a long time, but as you've seen by this video, it's kind of on the shortest side because I'm thinking I can make smaller videos instead of waiting like six months to one big, huge, time-consuming, energy-consuming video. Uh, as for the Final Dreams podcast, one of my favorite projects to work with, if not my favorite project to work with, uh, there was a new episode released recently, um, yesterday at the time of recording this, and there's a new episode that should come out sometime soon. The charity still doing pretty good, collabs are always in the same way, you know, the channel. It's, uh, we're, we're cooking stuff, so Nico is currently cooking a video, which I'm not part of, but, um, I am sure that it will be a great experience. So, I'm just hoping that you enjoyed this video. It might not be my bombastic video yet, but I've learned that, you know, less is more, and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I'm cooking. There's a lot of videos that I think you guys might enjoy. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit weird. It's that I, uh, a, a, a little bit tired, you know? But uh, that's 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 just me being tired and sick because I have like a kind of kind of a throw hake. It's 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 all fine. It's all fine. It's all dandy. With that being said, again, thank you so much for for, for watching this video. Leave criticism and ensure your fear of crack will fight while you're there. With that being said, I'll go because I need to cook the next video. Crack? What the fuck?